Hey everyone, welcome or welcome back to my channel. My name is Emily or at mhughesart. I am very happy that you found your way here. So today I'm going to be trying a very interesting medium. I'm going to be trying Magello's Mission Titanium Gouache Set. And what really got me excited about these paints is that they are a watercolor gouache hybrid and apparently you can pan them and they reactivate really well with water. So I really wanted to try them out here with you guys. Magello sent me these to try out, but I'm gonna give you my full honest opinion as somebody who works a lot with gouache, both traditional and acrylic. So I'm very curious to see what these paints are like and I hope you are interested as well. So we're gonna set up a palette, we're gonna swatch, and we're gonna do some paintings. So I was really intrigued by these because apparently they are a watercolor gouache hybrid, which is super cool. I don't know if it's going to be more like a opaque watercolor situation, but they should be a little bit less opaque than your traditional gouache. So you can use them a little bit more like watercolor. And I believe Magello came out with a Mission White gouache line and the difference between that range and the Mission Titanium is that the pigments used in the white range were not light fast, they were fugitive, and all of the pigments used in the Titanium class range are super light fast. I think they all have a four or five star light fast rating. So we have 34 colors here and I went ahead and picked up a little palette and there are 39 pans in this palette and 34 paints, but I noticed that in the pamphlet they show you how you can mix certain colors with white to get more opacity. So I thought I could use those five extra pans and choose a few colors to make more opaque. So one of the huge draws to this paint is the fact that you can pan your paints just like you would watercolor because they reactivate with water, which traditional gouache does as well, but gouache tends to crumble up and fall apart in your palette and it can be very difficult to get it to that nice pancake batter consistency when you're painting if you just let your traditional gouache dry out. That is why a lot of artists, including myself, We'll put their gouaches in a airtight palette, like this one. I keep all of my traditional gouache in here, but Magello says that these paints do not crack. So supposedly you can pan them with, you know, little trouble. They won't crumble and fall apart, but I am really interested to see how they perform when they are reactivated with water versus, you know, straight from the tube. So I spent a little bit of time figuring out the perfect order for these paints in this palette. I find this part so relaxing. I just used some toothpicks to get out any air bubbles and stir up any binder separation.
Okay, so swatch time. I am swatching from the paints that are still wet, but I will talk a little bit about how they reactivate after they are dried in the pans a little bit later. As you can see, a lot of the colors aren't super opaque, but they are very pigmented. They also felt super smooth and, you know, not tacky or anything like that. And as for the color palette, I think it's pretty much perfect. When I was reading over the colors in the set, I was like, wow, these are almost nail on the head, the pigments, the colors I would have chosen if I was building up a set like this. Some of my favorite colors are the vermilion, the bright rose, I love the quinacridone colors, the violet and the magenta. The range of blues is really nice. I'm happy that we have an ultramarine deep. Also really happy with the cobalt green and the olive green. The earth tones are also really, really nice. I love the gold brown and the red brown. I couldn't get over how beautifully those swatched. I was also impressed that they included a basic gray because I feel like a lot of sets don't and I actually use gray a lot in my paintings because it's really good for desaturating. I think my only issue with the basic gray is I wish it was a little bit lighter in value. So I think in the future I might mix some more titanium light in that one, but yeah, that's just nitpicking. And then for those five color mixes with white, I ended up going with a white and dioxazine violet, a white and cobalt green, plus a little bit of cobalt blue. And then I did a white plus yellow ochre to get sort of a Naples yellow. I did white and bright rose and white and permanent red deep. So I can always change these in the future, but I did find myself using them a lot later on. I left the paints to dry in their pans for about a week and they dried quite shiny, more like watercolors than like gouache. I was really impressed that there was no major cracking or crumbly bits. They also reactivated really, really well, way better than dried gouache in my opinion. So to me, these felt, especially when swatching, more like watercolors than like gouaches. I've heard them compared to the Kuratake Tambi watercolors because those are a little more opaque. I do have a Tambi set, but I haven't used it in years, so I can't really say if that comparison is accurate. Before diving into a portrait, of course I had to try and do a portrait, I wanted to do a little study to get a feel for these paints and how I would approach using them. So I ended up doing this still life of a pear and I did it in this little cheap watercolor sketchbook. The paper isn't that good, but I have been liking it for studies. And for this, I thought I would use sort of a watercolor technique to start. So starting with the lightest lights and going very translucent and then layering up. And then I started bringing in the opacity. And yeah, I think this might be the, the technique to use with these paints. I do want to figure out how to rely a little bit more on the watercolor qualities of these paints rather than the gouache qualities. I would love to know if any of you guys have heard of gouache watercolor hybrid paints because I hadn't. I'd also love to know if you think this is a medium that you would use and maybe how you would use it. 
I couldn't really find many videos on these paints in English, but yeah, definitely let me know what you think about these. I hope you can tell from this footage, but the paints blend really nicely together. They're very buttery. I did feel a little bit like I was painting with oils, almost. That's how creamy they were. I did, however, find that they dried definitely not shiny, but not as matte as your traditional gouache. It's more noticeable in the darker areas. But I was thinking if you used a glossy gouache varnish, which, that's a tongue twister, <laughs> that a painting like this could almost pass as an oil painting, which I thought was pretty cool because we don't have to deal with the toxic fumes that come with oil painting. Okay, so I felt like doing a male portrait today and I will put the reference in the description box. Please tell me if I forget. <laughs> but I started with a very watery wash of dioxazine purple for sort of an underpainting because looking at the reference, I found that the shadows were quite purple and I really tried to treat it sort of how I would a watercolor at this stage. Though I knew I didn't have to be quite as careful because of the opaque layers that we're going to follow. Oh, and this is a hot pressed watercolor paper that I am painting on, if you are curious. After that layer completely dried, I went back in with a coal erase pencil to reestablish some of these shapes and proportions that I felt like I lost a little bit. And again, I knew I could do this because of the opacity that was to come. I then did a layer of the gold brown color. It sort of looks like a burnt sienna, and dioxazine purple and burnt sienna is a combo that I sometimes like to use in watercolors. So I thought I would use it here to start building this painting. So after that, I kind of didn't know where to go with it. I decided to go in with more opaque paints to establish the darks because I was worried about them becoming muddy later in the painting. And this is sort of how I go about painting a traditional gouache portrait. But part of me wishes that I used them more like watercolors here by starting to get in the lights and the midtones first. I find when using a new medium, you kind of have to think about your approach, but then ultimately you have to, you know, try something and see if it works. And if it doesn't, you learn for the next time. <laughs> I still think this painting turned out good. I just have so many ideas for how I could use these paints in the future. Also, I think if I were to do this again, I would approach this portrait a little bit differently. So the jump between translucent layers and then the opaque layers is definitely the ugly stage of the piece. And the ugly stage is quite long in this one, but I just told myself to trust the process and yeah, eventually it does come together. I find with this medium, it just gets better and better the more you layer. There is definitely a point where you can push things too far and things get a little bit muddy 
which I think maybe I did a little bit. It's definitely a very fine line though, and it's gonna take some more practice to figure out where exactly that line is. Something I wanted to point out, as far as I know you can't purchase individual tubes of this paint, you can only buy them as a set. Perhaps you can buy individual tubes in Korea or other parts of Asia, I'm not sure. But for me, in Canada and I think also in the States, you can only buy these paints as a set. And maybe this will change in the future. The tubes are large-ish at 15 milliliters, but it will definitely be sad when I start to run out of certain colors because these really are such a joy to work with. Okay, so I want to give my final thoughts. I think these paints are super high quality. It felt really luxurious to paint with them. You can tell that the pigments are super high quality and finely ground, which has me, you know, really curious to try Magello's watercolors. These paints as gouache are very interesting. They definitely aren't super opaque, but you can slowly build up that opacity. I would say it takes a little bit longer to do that than traditional gouache, but it has some really lovely attributes. I think in the future I would really like to try to do a more watercolor based piece with these paints and then have just a few moments in the painting of opacity. I think that could be really cool. I also think that from now on I'll probably just squeeze out the white I'm going to use every time just because I think it would be helpful to have that already wet because it can get quite dirty in the pan and also you just use so much of it. You can layer these paints a lot, like a lot, a lot, and they handle really well, but there is a slight, slight sheen, especially in the darker colors if you are using them more opaquely. And I think that's why this could be cool to use almost like a traditional oil painting where the darks are more translucent and the lights are more opaque. And I'm sure the reason that there is that slight sheen is because of the binder or whatever's in the binder to allow us to pan these gouaches without them crumbling. I will say they definitely reactivate with water a lot easier than traditional gouache dried out. I found it super easy to get them to a nice consistency, which I think is probably the biggest pro of this set, is that you can pan them, they reactivate super well from dry, and because of those things, I think this would be the perfect travel gouache set. You don't have to travel with wet paint or tubes, and you also don't have to worry about having a crumbly mess in your bag. I also think this set would be really good for plain air painting for that reason. I think this would be great for that as well, urban sketching, all of that. So I think for me, I'm going to use these for travel. Hopefully I can travel <laughs> sometime in the future and I'll take these along with me. Uh, but I think I'll also use them in my sketchbooks. I would also like to try 
doing some more finished pieces with these paints. So those are my final thoughts. I guess I had a lot to say. So yeah, in the end, I am really impressed with these paints. I think my portrait turned out pretty good. There definitely was a little bit of a learning curve because they behave a little bit differently from traditional gouache, but I didn't really feel like I was fighting against the medium or anything like that. Okay, so I think that is it for this video. If you liked it, feel free to leave it a like, and if you want to see when I post next, feel free to subscribe. A huge thank you, as always, to my channel members. Your support means so much. I hope everyone watching has an amazing day or night, and I will see you all very, very soon with another video. Bye-bye!